Hey guys, welcome back to Bonsai. It's your old buddy Pinky, and uh, it's a beautiful day here at the shop. Building a bunch of spec cart motors, and just wanted to take a minute. And uh, there's a question that comes up probably more frequently than anything with regard to Harbor Freight Predator engines, and that is Hemi or non Hemi. Uh, how do I know the difference? What is the difference? What does it mean to me? Um, okay, so here's the deal. The Harbor Freight engine, the 212 engine, comes in two varieties, Hemi or non-Hemi. There's also like a weird California emissions one that you never hear about. But, um, but here in the rest of the free world, um, there are basically two types. There's Hemi and non-Hemi. It was always easy to tell them apart. The Hemi was uh, part number 60363. The non-Hemi straight valve engine was... Uh, 69730 and that was a really reliable way of telling if you were standing in the store which engine you're looking at now here's where it gets kind of a little challenging first uh, harbor freight treated those two part numbers as the exact same thing so if you went online ordered a 69730 you want a straight valve engine um you might get a hemi depends what they have at the warehouse at that moment uh, same thing with the stores. If you call the store and say, hey, uh, D, can you check stock on a 69730? Um, if they have either one, 60363 or 69730, they're going to tell you they have it and you're going to get down there and there's a good chance it's going to be the other one. So the only really reliable way, um, actually, it gets even more complicated. Um, recently, about two weeks ago, I went to my local Harbor Freight to buy uh, a bunch of straight valve engines because we build a lot of these cart spec motors. And um, I noticed that there was a box with the straight valve, the 69730 part number on it. The photograph on the box was a, a Hemi engine, a 60363 engine. I looked through the little handhold in the box to take a look at the engine. Sure enough, it was a Hemi. Looked even closer at the box and they had reprinted the box, the old 60363 box with the 69730 straight valve part number. That's really curious. And I looked even closer on the side of the box, there's a little technical specs, you know, box printed in and uh, they had neglected to change the part number there. And so they made little stickers to have the new part number. So. It looks like Harbor Freight may be consolidating both of these two formerly different part numbers into one single part number. So now really the only reliable way to uh, choose which engine you want is to actually go to the store and look at the box. The artwork on the box, the photograph on the box will reflect the engine that's in it. Or as I mentioned, you can peek through the little handholds that are cut in the box and do a visual check on it. Visually, they're very easy to tell apart. Okay, the Hemi, the, the big, okay, first off, the, the only real significant difference, I mean, there's a lot of little differences. The cam uh, journal size is different. The, um, the, fly, the, cam, the uh, crankshaft and flywheel are different. The valve stem diameter is different. The piston is different. I mean, there's, there are differences. They're not exactly the same motors, but the biggest visual dif difference is going, and the biggest functional difference is going to be the cylinder head, okay? Here we have an engine, and we're talking about this guy, the cylinder head. The Hemi engine has a cast, rectangular-shaped valve cover. The straight valve engine, non-Hemi, has a stamped, sort of stop sign-shaped valve cover. Okay, so that's a super reliable way to tell. If you've got this valve cover, you are a Hemi. If you've got a stamped valve cover, you are a non-Hemi. Now, what does that mean, right? What, what's Hemi, what's non-Hemi, what is any of that talking about? Okay, what it's referring to is the shape of the combustion chamber. Okay. Hemispherical, right? Think about like the Earth, right? The Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere. If you chopped it off, what you'd have is a sort of you know, if you chop it in the middle, you have a bowl, right? Completely bowl shaped. That's what a hemispherical combustion chamber is. The whole thing is like a big bowl. And what that does is it makes the valves come in at an angle. 
okay? Here's our valve. On a Hemi engine, our valve is coming up and down, opening and closing like this, okay? On a straight valve engine, the roof of our combustion chamber is flat, is perpendicular to the deck, to the top of the piston. So when it's operating, our valves go up and down like this, okay? Hemi is coming in sideways, straight valve is coming up, straight up and down. What are the advantages to that? Okay. Because the valves and consequently the seats are angled, the bend in the port, okay, so like here's our car, here's our intake port. The air is gonna come in and do just a little bit of a bend to get down past that seat because the seat is already sitting at an angle that's closer to the angle of the port. On a straight valve engine, you know, they angle the port as best they can, but basically it's still gonna come in and have to do a hard transition to then flow out around the valve or, you know, vice versa on the exhaust side. It's gotta get up in, make a hard turn out the side. On a Hemi, it comes in, it does a little more gradual turn, a lot more gradual turn actually, and comes out. So Hemi heads flow better. They, they just naturally flow better because it's less of an angle for the charge, either intake or exhaust charge, that has to turn to get through the port itself or through the, the valve itself. So you'd say, well, why aren't all engines Hemi engines? Why, why don't I want a Hemi engine? Here's the problem. There are two primary problems with the Hemi engine, okay? Let me just say this right off the bat. If you plan to extensively modify your engine, um, you're gonna add a bigger cam or lift, bigger springs, all that stuff. It's much easier to do it with a straight valve engine. And here's why. On the Hemi engine, okay, here's our piston, right? Look, we're operating and our, our piston is going up and down and up and down and up and down, right? And the valves are opening and closing in relation to the movement of the piston. On a straight valve engine, right, our valves are going straight up and down, perpendicular to the face of the piston. So our piston's coming up, our valve is opening, our valve is closing, right, everybody's happy. There are times when these come very close to each other, I mean very close, within a hundred thousand, hundreds, one hundred thousandths, you want at least 80 thousandths. You never want these guys to get any closer at any point in their movement than 80 thousandths. So with a straight valve, everything is cool as it goes up and down, you know, there you are. Now with a Hemi, as it goes up and down, and you can see the problem, instead of, you know, it there being a lot of clearance, it's this edge of the valve is much closer to that piston. You don't ever want them to meet each other, like ever, right? Ever, ever. And so it becomes much more challenging to add lift to make this go even further, right? Because the bottom edge of this valve is already inherently much closer to the face of the piston. So if you're gonna add a lot of lift to a Hemi, you're going to have to do something to address that, okay? Generally, we're gonna we'll we'll mill we'll machine pockets into the top of the piston for this edge of the valve to actually go down and sit into. Um, so that becomes a, a problem. Valve to piston clearance becomes um, critical much more quickly in terms of the amount of additional lift by way of larger cam or ratio rockers or if you're adventurous on a handy, both. You're gonna to have to do considerably more machine work, a lot more clearancing, and really a lot more planning with a Hemi. With a straight valve, generally, I mean, you, it depends on a lot of things. How much have you milled the head? How close up to the deck is the piston? 
there's a lot to work with there, but you can generally add a lot more lift, a lot more duration uh, before you really start to get into clearancing issues with the valve and the piston. Okay, so you say, well, I can do that, I can do the machine work, that's fine. Here's the other problem. Because these ports are so awesome, right, we end up with very little meat between the roof of this port, the top of the port, okay, what I call the roof, the long side of the port, and the spring pocket that's machined into the cylinder head that holds the bottom of the valve spring, right? So now let's talk about the way this works, right? The push rod's coming up, it pushes down on, it pushes up on the rocker arm, which pushes down on the valve, which opens and closes the valve, right? We can only push this spring down so far before it's going to bind, okay? So it's, you know, the valve spring, once you get it to here, there's no more it can go, it's bound, okay? All of the coils are touching each other and it's impossible for it to compress any further. On a straight valve engine, because our ports aren't immediately beneath the valve seat itself, we can machine quite a bit of material away deep in that seat so that we can put a spring that's got more or thicker coils and not have to squeeze it so far to its maximum you know, compression that it's going to bind. On a Hemi, we can't. On a Hemi, there's very little room here, okay? So we're really limited. You can only go so deep on this before you're gonna blow through the roof of this port. And God forbid you've done any porting and move that roof even closer. Now you're in real trouble. Hemi engines um, will coil bind, like with these, people run these OEM Honda 18 pound springs. An 18 pound spring will coil bind almost in a stock straight valve, almost certainly in a stock Hemi, and absolutely positively if you add any kind of lift into the equation beyond stock. Okay, Hemis are notorious for coil bind issues. And so even if you do the machine work, you machine pocket reliefs into the piston, you do everything you know very carefully, you work out all your math, you're still going to be limited ultimately, uh, unless you do extensive, extensive machine work in the maximum amount of lift that you can run. Now the good news is the ports flow better so you don't need quite as much. And by, you know, by virtue of the nature of the design, there's much less valve shrouding. So the Hemi flows better. It's a good thing because um, you are going to uh, need that flow because you can't lift it up the valve as far off the seat nor hold it open as long. Can't lift it as far off the seat because of the coil bind issue. Can't hold it there for as long because we got to get this edge of the, you know, a half an inch down edge of the valve out the way because the piston's coming back up. So, if you're going to leave the motor absolutely dead stock, you're not going to do anything to it. You just want a good running, torquey little motor. Hemis are great. Hemis are even good. You can do a mild, mild build on a Hemi, and they're an entertaining little motor, right? But it's at the end of the day, if you're going to do really a radical engine, you can rework straight valve ports to the point where they flow really well, okay? You're going to have to do some work on it, um, and you actually you want somebody who knows what they're doing to do some work on it. But um, you can make straight valve ports flow perfectly adequately if you're modifying the engine. So stock engine, go with a Hemi, go with a Hemi. They're, they, they make like a, I don't know, like a half a foot pound more torque stock or something like that. <laughs> if you plan on turning the wick up at all, go with a straight valve. Go to your Harbor Freight, look for the stamped valve cover, okay? Cast valve cover is good, completely stock, uh, octagonal, um, hexagonal, septagonal, I don't know. I don't know all my gunnels, but um, 
stamped valve cover is your straight valve. Uh, let me think, is there anything else that you need to know about these engines? Um, again, differences would be a flat top piston in the Hemi engine versus a dish piston in the straight valve. You're gonna get five and a half millimeter valve stems in the Hemi. You get five millimeter valve stems. That's the size, the diameter of the valve stem, this, okay? Uh, the bigger it is, the stronger it is. The smaller it is, the lighter it is, right? Um, the Hemi engine uses kind of like a old GX clone type retainer on the spring to hold it on the valve and lash caps. The straight valve engine has modern sort of automotive style like V keepers. So, you know, they're a little bit better, you know, right out the box. Um, the other thing is you can get stamped high ratio rocker arms for, I don't know, less than 20 bucks. Any kind of different rocker arms for the Hemi is going to be a lot more money. So 120 plus. So again, stock motor, you want a Hemi. Um, doing any kind of modifications, plan on building some real horsepower, you want a straight valve. So there you go. Uh, that's, uh, that's a little riff on Hemi versus non-Hemi. Uh, that's the whole thing in a nutshell.